Are you interested in a review of the all-new BMW Z4 Roadster? Let's go! Wide front double kidney here, also with this pin design. You can get different frames here. You can get this black shadow line, but there's also chrome or a silver available. So you have a, some choice there. This one's the M Sport model. So design wise, it comes close to the M40i. If you get the base model, the lower area looks a little bit different. There's a little bit less vehicle color than in the lower area. Headlamps come standard with LED, but Optional, you can go for the adaptive LED lamps. The new Z4 has also gained 9 centimeters in length, now at 4 meters 32, 14 foot 1 or 170 inches. Very interesting because the design, especially here through this longer rear overhang, has changed if you compare it to the predecessor generation. Then the 17 to 19 inch wheels, those ones are the top one, 19 inch in black. First of all, they saved about 40 kilograms because they went for soft top now instead of hard top. But then again, the overall weight is still 10 kilograms more because of all the new technology, you know, all the electronics you need as well and suspension and so on. But that's overall quite normal. However, if you go for a four cylinder, you will save 150 kilograms in weight and in comparison to a six cylinder. It's also very interesting. And by the way, when you hold this key here, you can also close the roof. So I'll leave a free picture right now. It takes about 10 seconds and you can do it up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour, also while driving, that's possible. And this fabric here from the roof is available in black and gray. So those options you have. I think the gray one also works quite well. That looks pretty fancy. You can also check it out in our other video. And the same way, if you hold the opening button, then let's see here, you can also do it all the way back again. And now to the rear, which is, you know, pretty neat design, just very little design lines. Very interesting also the side look right there, quite sculptural. These tail lamps here, they are more horizontally drawn, more modern design overall. And those here are real exhaust pipes indeed. And you can also see there's a valve in there, a special one to boost up the sound. Engine lineup starts with a 2 liter 4 cylinder, the 20i in Europe, with about 200 horsepower, 6.6 .6 seconds is the acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour, and starts below 50k in price. Then you already pay about 5,000 euros more, or also about 50,000 US dollars in US for the base engine for the US. This one then will be the 30i, this one here today, 2 liter 4 cylinder, same block, but then 258 horsepower and about the second fast in the acceleration, 5.4 seconds. And then you pay yeah, over 60K, so about 12,000 euros or dollars more for the M40i, then with a 3 liter R6 or inline six cylinder, 340 horsepower. And even a second fast in 4.5 seconds is the acceleration figure. Yeah, so more price, more horsepower, the question is, is the four cylinder enough actually in the acceleration? We'll find out for you.
M entry badge. This one here is the M Sport model. And the steering wheel, it's the M steering wheel also with a sport yard yeah, touch. Left side here for the cruise control, right side for voice input or for the volume. Then no seats. There are two seats available, normal sport seat and an M sport seat, but they are not too different. They both basically have the same form. Just a little bit here you know, from the stitching area here is different. And the good thing is the customers in US can buy a full sensor tech option. In Germany, for example, we cannot get that. Mostly also this one here is animal skin. There is one seat option which has some Alcantara and then animal skin mixed. That would be the next best one also for the climate comfort. For getting inside this vehicle, it's important to know what happens when the roof is actually closed. So I'm one means 86 or six foot one. And when the roof is closed, that still leaves me some headroom. And wait a minute, not even all the way down with the seat here. So when I'm going all the way down with the seat, even more headroom. The interior overview here, since this is a roadster, a little bit different today. Again, this is the real cockpit perspective. The screens 10.25 inch each left and right both digital, both with newest iteration of the BMW system. Soon more details to that. Then you can still see the climate unit can be somewhat controlled manually. The volume knob is still there. You can turn that one and in the lower area you have an inductive charging pad for the smartphone and the USB supply. Then the shifting lever, you can see here, automatic shifting lever. This is quite well placed. Also start stop engine mode. And then there's this turning pressing knob that you can control the infotainment system while driving a little bit better. The full potential of the instruments you can only see when turning on the engine actually. And you can see here the revs go up counterclockwise. Yeah, at first we said Sacre Lake in every vehicle, but actually you get used to it for a while. And then in the middle, for example, there's then space left for the infotainment system, which then also can display some GPS info. So that's actually a gain then. You can also order a head-up display with the allowed speed, current speed and also some GPS info. So that's a very helpful option too. Here in the new iteration of the infotainment system, you can control it by touch. So that's cool actually, but you can also control it still with the lower turning and pressing knob. So while driving, that's for example helpful here with the GPS. You can also have the map hotkey for example and you can see you can zoom in and out quite easily. You have to activate the Apple CarPlay and so on. So it takes a while after you find that you can really use that also. But then it's once connected with the wireless CarPlay and then it's also fine, especially if the connection then down there with the wireless charging too. But no Android Auto still from BMW. And you can either press this button here at the steering wheel or say, hey BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? Please drive me to Berlin. All right, our next destination is Berlin. So for example, for GPS put, input, it works quite well. Or you can also, for example, do it with the um, AC. And now this trunk area, which is at 281 liters. And the interesting thing is that here in the very front area, it's a little bit more than one meters wide. And then in the back area, it's a little bit less than one meters. And the length, overall length, is about 80 centimeters. That's still quite decent. And the height is not influenced by the soft top. So it always stays at yeah, about 36 centimeters. And that's a big step forward if you compare it to the previous generation. 50% increase, actually. So a cabin trolley like this, you could put in that way. Also another one next to it. So what about that launch control here? We put it in sport, then we put the traction control, the dynamic protection, dynamic traction control. So that's not easy off, but drawn back. And we put it to this manual mode, the shifting lever to the left side. And also steer just a little bit and then we can also see how stable the car and how controllable it still stays with that launch control. Hitting now the brake with my left foot all the way through and then I'll push my right foot all the way through the throttle. And that was just 100 kilometers an hour. Wow! Very nice. And 
Have you realized how smooth that launch control went actually? So I was very well in control also of the vehicle. So I think quite well done. Well, and now we're gonna go up the hill, some handling. Also in the sports mode. Then you hear more plop from the exhaust, definitely. The steering is a little bit stiffer, but overall the steering is very soft, even in the sports mode. It gives me some of the direct and nice go-kart handling, yes, but it's not the most natural steering feeling. But overall, this car is very well to control. So look at those steering commands here. It very well responds to what I'm doing. Also, the you know, slight oversteer them from this rear wheel drive really gives me good accelerating out of the corners. If I'm really accelerating it, there would also be the rear differential lock optional. Wow, very nice. Nice. Can also go to the you know, sports traction mode, that would also be possible. So in this case, like at the other corner, it you know, decelerated me a little bit. Here now when I have it off, a little bit more play, but still such a good traction from the car. Wow, that's really a lot of fun to drive it in an agile way. So guys, what about close top, high speed, motorway? Let's put it to the sports mode. Also, the gears are turned up higher. You higher you um, hear me more from the exhaust. So let's see if we can safely enter the motorway. Yeah, we'll let those two cars pass, and then we get on the motorway. And let's really now accelerate it out. Uh, we we'll let one more car pass to be really safe. Now we're going from like 20 kilometers, like whatever. Plop. That's 200 kilometers or 125 miles per hour. Pretty decent as for the acceleration, so. And of course, now it gets somewhat loud in here, although we have the close top. But that's no wonder with the convertible overall at those speeds. Now the brakes. Oh yeah, that's good because the car is not heavy in weight. Therefore, the brakes are also working very well. Nice, nice, nice. So you don't need much more power, I would say. So uh, the M40i is, of course, more powerful as for the acceleration, yes. And still this one here, you see, since you have 150 kilograms less in weight with the four cylinder, also performs very well as for that. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW Z4 Roadster in the new generation. Overall, the styling here, I think it works pretty well. First of all, you might have, you know, had to get used to it. It does not have the same styling as before, especially with the longer rear there. But you know, I got used to it and I think I really like it meanwhile. Also with the interior pretty clean from the setup, rather conservative overall, especially for the international markets, they need some more uh, you know, stepping up in the animal skin alternative. In the US with the sensor tech at the moment, the best option right there. Then from the driving, this is really superb because it has more comfort, definitely more comfort than in the previous generation. That's the biggest step up right here. And it's one of the most comfortable roadsters right now on the market. That's also the main aspect for that. But at the same time, it's super agile and driving, so much driving fun in different aspects. It works also high speed as we've shown you here on the motorway with a close top. So definitely one of the very good fun machines here at the moment. Four or six cylinder, well, it also depends on the price and if you really need that, if you rather use it for cruising. And also remember, 150 kilograms less here, especially for the four cylinder. So it makes the car a little bit lighter. I really like that. So I would rather go maybe for a purist experience, also keep it low with the specs, because even with the four cylinder, when you spec it all full as we have here today, then this one here is even at 68,000 euros. Wow. 
and the full spec with all options in the M40i was 75. Yeah, so is there still a 7,000 euros difference then in this case with the full spec four cylinder or full spec six cylinder? So you will always save a couple of thousand euros, but you will save even more if you keep it a little bit lower spec. Yeah, if you spend a lot of money anyway, then you can also say already can go for the six cylinder, that works well too. And then you can have even more sound experience and even more acceleration. What about you? Which one would you go for? And please also compare our M40i review. We will link it in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And thank you so much again for tuning in today. Please subscribe and also tell your friends to subscribe. Always a good way to support Autogofuel is to subscribe both of our channels. Subscription links are also in the video description right there and in the pinned comment. And also keep recommending us to everyone because we only rely on word of mouth. We're not a you know, big company or something to say. We just live uh, from our community that you are really joining and supporting us and that's also you know what's very important to us thank you again guys for everything and see you next time